A few days ago, Studio Kara dropped a bombshell to the fandom with a new and possibly final release date for 3 plus 1, March the 8th, just 10 days after the announcement. Of course, social media exploded. Finally, after 10 years in the making, we are just 10 days away from release for the fourth and final entry of Reveal of Evangelion, or the new theatrical edition. But how did we get here? Why this film was delayed so many times, and what Studio Kara were doing all of this time? The purpose of this video is to go over the answers to those questions, but also to leave a statement on the web for the future, a recognition to the fandom who has patiently waited for a decade. We will also go over the different names of the movie, as it had multiple ones, and all of its posters. Ready? Let's begin. On December 31st, 2011, Evangelion's official website announced the movie for the first time. The release date will be sometime in 2013. This was just before Reveal Cube was released. Thus, in November 2012, many fans were speculating that both films were actually one divided in two parts, as their release date were so close. Furthermore, considering how Kara has been currently treating Reveal Q with animation upgrades and a new edition, may indicate that those rumors back then are correct. But more on that later. November 17, 2012 came, Q premiere, and oh boy many people were angry, demanding for answers and a fourth movie. But the previous movie announcement suddenly disappeared from the Evangelion website. This was the first time that can be considered that the film was delayed, as it seemed like the tentative 2013 release date was not going to happen. Before Q's release, the working title for the final movie was Evangelion Final. But on the preview for the movie, at the end of Reveal Q, we were announced another name, Shin Evangelion Gehikoban, or New Theatrical Edition, with a musical repeat sign. We know that the Japanese musical screenplay structure is divided in three acts, Ho, Ha, and Q. A fourth act does not exist in this type of structure, so for the fourth movie we got a musical repeat sign. Or how some of you have pointed out, it's not the repeat sign, but actually the conclusion sign, as the two points have been used in the other titles. You can watch my Loop Theory video for more on that. After the announcement of the name, Evangelion website and social media will use it extensively, but without a release date. In 2014, Kara revealed the second title for the film, 3 plus 1. And in an interview a few weeks later, Hideki Anno was asked about the time frame for the release of the final movie, in which he said that the timelines between the previous movies have been between 2 or 3 years. And I quote, Wouldn't be nice if the next one comes 4 years, no, 6 years later. At that point, Anno did confirm he was actively working on the movie, to release it as soon as possible. However, in this same interview, Anno talked about his relationship with the legendary director Hayao Miyazaki, and how at the end of the original TV run, he felt again on a depression, and how Miyazaki was there for him, and was the one who saved his life. Anno's depression had influenced his work in many ways. He also confirmed that Miyazaki motivated him to finish the rebuilt tetralogy. In December that year, Kara will surprise fans with an unofficial trailer, titled Until You Come To Me. It was released on the Japan Animator Expo, in which shows images and sequences that seems to be for the upcoming movie. Now, although there's a lot of speculation, the fact is that Kara was showing the new animation technologies they were working on. Therefore, because it is not an official trailer, we cannot be sure that any of these images will be on the final movie. But I wouldn't discard it. 2015 came and many fans started to hype about the film, as since it was long speculated that this was the year for the release of the film. A speculation that came given that the magazine Otona Famine had been leaking the tentative release date for two years, specifically for winter 2015. This information was reinforced by Weekly Bunchen on November 2014. So now fans had several reliable sources that confirm a possible release date for the second half of 2015. Bunchon in this article went even further, as revealed that the singer Ikaru Tada will be back to sing the theme song of the film. They got this right, as we know now that Utada's single One Last Kiss is the theme song for the movie. In March 2015, 
Studio Toho announced that Hideki Anno will call direct the reboot for Godzilla, titled Shin Godzilla. In addition, he will be adding the screenplay for the movie. The film will start filming in fall of 2015 and set to be released in summer 2016. And yeah, they did just that. A live-action Godzilla movie is easier to make than an Evangelion movie, it seems. It was later revealed that Studio Toho and his friend and co-director for the movie, Shinji Gushi, approached to him in 2013 to pitch the idea. Anno was struggling in a depression at the time. There were some hints that he was going through one after review key release and the backlash from the movie, but no one confirmed it. And this is it, basically. Anno is Evangelion, and Evangelion is Anno. No one cares more about these characters than he does. Anyway, Shin Godzilla was something different than Anno, although shy at first, accepted the proposal and dedicated 100% of his time to the film, a film that would help him to overcome his depression. Now, I watched Shin Godzilla a while ago and I have to say I like the movie for a very specific reason. Godzilla itself. It is amazing. Sadly, I don't understand Japanese politics, and most of the human interactions of the film were around that. I later learned that the whole theme of the movie was a critique on Japanese authorities and their reaction towards a disaster, as Godzilla itself is a walking tsunami, a nuclear reactor, and an earthquake combined. And although we went through 2016 without official announcements from Kara, hints or other leaks, as everything was turning around Godzilla, we did get an official letter from Anno himself, in which he apologized to the fandom and confirmed directly how Reveal Q affected him emotionally and almost quit the production for the final movie, and how Shin Godzilla saved him, adding that he is back on making Evangelion again. In April 2017, a tweet appeared on Studio Kara's account announcing that they are working on the film and the development were running smoothly. This little tweet here was the first official statement about the film from Kara in three years. But they weren't running as smoothly as they said, as we did not got more information about the film for a bit over a year. When Studio Kara posted new positions available for animators in May 2018, they were looking people specifically for 3D CG, VFX, and 2D animation. Those posts will start in June that year. Now, usually when studios, and this works for video game studios as well, start actively looking for more people, it means either of two things. One, that the production is behind schedule and need more people to speed it up. Or two, that it's going pretty well and they need fresh minds to go over the production to tie anything that the current team might have missed. Usually, it's the second one. But of course, that doesn't generate clicks, therefore the fandom got alarmed again. Kara quickly responded this time, and a couple of months later, white smoke emanated from the official Evangelion website. For the first time in almost seven years, an official release date was announced. In 2020, there will be a film. You can actually watch a video I made about it back then. My first Evangelion video, I should add. In July 2018, we got the first teaser for the movie, aside of Reveal's Q preview. In it, we are only shown Mary falling from the sky, fighting an off-screen enemy. And that's it. It is the first time in almost seven years we get something from the film. In July 2019, one year later, during the event Operation 0706, we got the 10 minutes opening scene from the film, or Avant One. This was during the Japan Expo in Paris, France, and also it was broadcasted in Japan, and about an hour later, in Los Angeles, California, Anime Expo. Later, the same teaser that appeared a year earlier, uh, the one with Mary, is re-released with an actual date, June 2020. The exact date will be announced until December 27th of that year, when we got the first confirmed actual date, June 27th, 2020. We get to 2020, and in April, Kara decided to postpone the release date due to the worldwide health emergency which was understandable. In exchange, there is a shift on their communications. Now the studio is more open in giving information about the film, as well as we get new images, and of course the first official poster, which actually isn't, but more on that in a minute. In this poster, we are revealed yet another title to the film, Thrice Upon a Time, which it seems that part of the fandom has agreed on that is a reference to James P. Hogan's time travel 1980 novel of the same name. 
Now, I'm not gonna get too deep into it because I am not very familiar with it, like at all. All I know is that it involves sending messages through times using quarks, which in the Evangelion universe are the basis for Quantum Ray, which I cover on my Ray video. Still, I am not completely behind this theory, as I believe that it has more to do with the Adams and the children, but I can see the parallelism as time travel is part of another theory. The poster also included the phrase, bye bye, all of Evangelion, from which could indicate that the outcome of the film will put a definite end to all of the different storylines, whether they are connected or not. Also can mean that Anno is saying goodbye to his work, as he has no plans to directly be involved in another Evangelion project. I guess that we will have to wait and see. The image in the poster shows Shinji on top of rail tracks, which seems to be a train station from Anno's hometown of Ube. That same day, Anno will release a handwritten letter. Of course it had to be handwritten, it's Anno for God's sake. A handwritten letter means that it's close and personal, therefore he's speaking directly to his audience. Now that is deep. In it, he expressed his support to healthcare workers that have put their life on the line every day, and apologizes to fans for yet another delay. On October the 2nd, we are confirmed that the movie is going through a rush checkup, and two days later, on October the 4th, we learn from Kara's account and his second account that the movie will be longer than two hours, with the D part, which is basically the final part of the movie, but to be fair, it's more than that, but I am not going to bore you with filmmaking technicisms, is going to be 42 minutes long. Now, there is some speculation that the movie is going to have two D parts, which means that it's going to be divided in two parts. I don't know about that, neither I want to get into that discussion, but if that is the case, then 42 minutes will be the second one, in my opinion. We did not get the exact runtime at a time though, but fans now were sure that the movie is going to be the longest one of the tetralogy. On October the 15th we get a new release date, January 23rd, 2021, and we also got a new teaser. Now there is a confusion on what teaser is this one, the second or the third one? Well, on my opinion, it's the third one, because I count the original reveals Q teaser as a teaser, followed by Mary's teaser, Thus, this is the third one. Others consider this the second one as they do not count Reveal's Q original teaser. You know, the one with A plus 2, the unit that we haven't seen again since. But this third teaser is actually the first teaser that has real content and we are shown a lot of new imagery and scenes that might give us some clues on the film. I did a hot take about it when released so you can go ahead and check it out. On December the 9th, it was confirmed by Kara what it was leaked two years before. Hikaru Tada would be performing the theme song of the movie, titled One Last Kiss, a single that was set to be released on January 24, 2021, a day later that the movie premiered. On December 17th, it was announced that the movie was finished and ready to be projected, as it was done for a private group of staff members and VIPs. From now on, Kara warned the audience about potential leaks in social media. So there is one legitimate question regarding this. How come the movie was said to be released for June and they actually finished it in December? Well, the answer is simpler than you think. The global health emergency. As it was difficult to work on the film as the year started and completely ceased production as a schedule in April when they announced the first delay for 2020. On December 23rd, it was announced that Reveal Q New Edition 3.333 will be released on IMAX format, with a special scheduled projection back to back with 3 plus 1. On December 24th, the fourth teaser, or third one depending on your perception, was released. This will be introducing for the first time the song One Last Kiss. Thus, it is known as the One Last Kiss trailer. I did an analysis on the trailer, you can go ahead and check it out. With it also came a new poster, this time showing the five pilots with white sand and clear water in the background. Now here's my take on this poster. I believe that this is a tribute to the end of Evangelion, as we know how the movie ends with red water on a white sand beach. This is the opposite to it, as now we have clear water, that may indicate that instead of a tragic ending, this time we will get a happy one. Furthermore, 
Notice how Mary is the one that is the most excited about it. This may indicate the relationship of Mary and Wiley, but I will go a bit more over that on my next video. That takes us to January the 14th, 2021, when we are announced that the movie will be delayed again. Shortly after, we are confirmed that everything around it, including Reveal Q's new edition and One Last Kiss release, will also be postponed, without a tentative new date. I cover all of that timeline in depth on a video I made back then, you can check it out as well. On January 25th, we got a new TV spot, the first one with Kaoru in it. This could be considered teaser 5, and a few days later, Reveal Q's new preview for 3 plus 1 was aired in Japan which some consider teaser 6. I also did a video about it. You can check all of these videos either on the annotations on the upper right corner of your screen or down in the description section of the video. I've been covering this for a while now. On February the 16th, it was leaked by the film classification and radio organization that the film will have a total runtime of 154 minutes, which would make it the third longest theatrical anime adaptation of all times. This was later denied by Kara, as in fact, the film will not be 154 minutes, but rather 155 minutes. How dare you to take a minute out of it, Earring? Finally, we got to February 26, when Kara, out of the blue, announced that the movie will be released on March the 8th, 10 days after this last announcement. With it, confirmed that the last one, Kiss song, will be released the same day for commercial and streaming purposes. And that is where we are today. Now let's go over the posters that I didn't cover, as there are four, although only two are well known. During pre-production they worked with another two. The first one was posted on Kara's website on or before 2018, hard to say. In it we can see a blue sky and a red core covered ground. On my opinion this is a representation for the conflict between Nerf represented by red and Wiley represented by blue. Notice the posts, they are not straight. If you have watched my videos, you know that Anno uses telephone or power posts as a metaphor for human communications. Usually, when they are straight, everything is right, and when they get moved, there is a problem. Now, the after that and the end might be a reference to the loop theory. Regarding to the not and anti, the knot is an indication of a decision that could have been made and it featured in the previous three movies' titles, and the anti might indicate an alternative reality that would come from those decisions. The phrase is the same that the previous one, also notice again how the tower is red and the sky blue. It has been a long journey since 2011, but finally it seems that we are at the end of the tunnel, as in a couple of weeks from now, most of you who have seen the movie. I want to give a huge applause to all of you that have been along this crazy ride, and I hope that the movie fulfills all of your expectations. Remember to like the video if you did, subscribe if you haven't already, yell at me on Twitter anytime you like, and of course, as always, I wish you all a wonderful day.